Uh, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, it feels pretty good to be back in Canada. Now, I I just got back from the UK I, and I had an awesome time. It was way too short, though. I was only there for, well, just over a week. And three days in the Lake District was definitely not enough. But it was nice to get a, a little bit of a taste. And it was really great to uh, to meet the folks that, that came out to the show. Um, I am planning to come back, uh, hopefully this time next year, except for longer, so two to three weeks, ideally, uh, so I can con concentrate a little bit more on, on the photography. So hopefully I'll get to see you guys again next year. All right. Now then, uh, video three of my uh, lighting series. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, reflected light. Now, reflected light is somewhat uh, self-explanatory. It's <laughs> reflected light. Uh, but what I'm going to be concentrating in this video is uh, I, I just want to kind of show you examples of where you might find that type of lighting. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Uh, before I start, I will say that, you know, this whole series of videos about lighting is to kind of uh, get you thinking about, you know, what types of light there are out there. Because to be honest with you, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but, um, you know, uh, uh, companies that make movies or photographers that uh, uh, are shooting a product usually uh, shoot, shoot stuff like that in a studio. And, and the reason being is that in a studio environment, uh, it's so much easier to control the lighting. Now, of course, over the years, things have changed up a little bit uh, because now we have computers. So, I mean, the, the things that you can do in computers now are just uh, limitless and you can change lighting and, and I mean, it just goes on and on. Uh, but for outdoor photographers like us, uh, it's, it is a real challenge because you're, you're pretty much left up to the elements and it's, it ends up being a waiting game. Uh, those that have the most patience and uh, uh, just keep going back to the same area over and over again, eventually will be rewarded. Um, but, you know, a lot of us don't have that time to, to hang out and, and wait for great light. And my last trip to, um, uh, to the Lake District was a, a, a prime example. Um, I mean, the weather was just gorgeous but the light for photography was not terribly exciting and because i'm a visitor and i'm only there for a limited amount of time you know you you kind of have to make some some pretty hard choices uh you could either not take any photographs whatsoever or just try to make the best out of a a, a bad situation so light is definitely the most important aspect some people might disagree with me uh but i i would definitely put light always at the top of the list. Anyway, without further delay, why don't we get right into uh, reflected light? All right. Okay, now I can't talk about reflected light without bringing up the uh, the canyons in the desert southwest of the United States. Now, for any of you that uh, watch this channel, you've probably heard of Ben Horn's channel and, and probably watch his videos. Uh, if you haven't, you should. Uh, I'll leave a link in, uh, in the description below. But Ben is always harping on about reflected light. And that's probably the main reason why I go down to the desert southwest, uh, places like Zion National Park, uh, the Escalante Wilderness, uh, the, both of those areas are my favorite areas to go and photograph intimate uh, shots of these canyons. The neat thing about the canyons in the desert southwest is that the best time to photograph in them is actually midday uh, on a bright blue bird uh, sunny sky day. You get the sun shining into the canyon and then you'll get all of this reflected light bouncing around, creating these wonderful contrasts in color. Now in this image here, this was taken in Spooky Gulch in the Escalante Wilderness, and you'll notice that there's some wonderful deep uh, orange light in here, but you'll also notice that there's a kind of a purpley blue color in there. 
And what's happening here is we're getting uh, reflected light directly hitting the canyon walls, but we're also getting reflections or ambient light from the blue sky above reflecting on the cliff as well. So that's where the blue is coming from. And of course, when you combine those two colors together, you get this wonderful uh, contrast in color, which I keep going on about in pretty much all of my videos. Now here in BC, uh, we do have canyons, but they're of course not uh, red sandstone. They're mostly either limestone or granite. And often they're surrounded by lots of green trees and covered in moss. So any reflected light that we do get is usually in the form of green rather than orange. And you can kind of see this in this image here. This is a, a photograph of a canyon on Vancouver Island, not far from Carmana Provincial Park. This is called Looper Canyon, and uh, it's a fantastic location. In this photograph here, I've taken a number of different exposures uh, because the contrast was just too high to, to get it all in one shot. So I exposed one shot for the reflections on the right side of the photograph, and then another shot for the, the left side of the photograph where, where the uh, ambient light is hitting the, the moss and the foliage and then I combined the two in Photoshop. But the reflections in here were just wonderful. The light was bouncing around this canyon and reflecting the light on the left side here and uh, you can see all the wonderful textures in, in the limestone. Now snow has some really wonderful reflective qualities to it. Uh, obviously being white in nature it's pretty much going to reflect any light that you throw at it. So early early in the morning or late in the evening when the sun's going down uh, the quality of light on snow is just superb. Uh, in this image here uh, this was early in the morning and you, obviously you, you can see that you're getting this beautiful orange light just skimming the snow, but also it's contrasting with the snow that's in the shade, catching ambient light from the sky again, creating a bit of a, con, uh, a contrast in color. Now here's the same scene. Uh, it actually clouded over us after, after the sun came up. And of course the light is much more subdued, uh, but it's still reflecting enough light in the shadows that you don't get any deep, deep shadows in, in snow and that's the thing that I really like about it. Even on bright sunny days you can get away with photographing snow and shadows because the light is reflecting around so much that you're just not going to get those deep black shadows that add contrast and confusion. So that's the, the main reason why I really love photographing snow and of course any type of color that you get in the clouds is going to reflect uh, directly on the snow and create these beautiful colors that you might not get anywhere else or in any other kind of landscape. Okay, now something to keep in mind when you are looking for reflected light, uh, you have to be careful when you start using polarizers. This image here, uh, some of you may recognize, I took quite recently. And what really attracted me to this route and this cliff face was the reflected light. Now, if I'd put on a polarizer, that would have eliminated all that reflected light. And then the image wouldn't have been quite as successful as it is. So if you are going to use a polarizer, be careful with it. Try it out first. See if it works, if it looks, improves the image. If it doesn't, then just don't use it. Or if you're not sure, try one image with it and try another without.
Now, in some situations, you can control uh, reflected light somewhat. I use it quite often when I'm doing uh, close-ups of flowers. I used it a lot when I was doing garden photography of close-ups. So what I would do, I'd have a, a subject such as this in bright sunshine, and of course the the contrast and the difference between the, the bright areas and the, and the dark areas really adds quite a bit of confusion. And of course in this image here, we have all these little um, distractions in the background in the form of, uh, of grasses. So what I've done in the next image here is I've actually diffused the light by just casting my own shadow over the whole scene. And you can see all of a sudden that the light is quite a bit softer and a little bit more manageable, but it's still quite flat and it's still quite confusing with all those little grasses in the background. So this last image here, what I actually did was I took the the box that my leaf filters uh, come in. It's a, a tin box. And what I've done here is I've carefully reflected the light that I want directly onto the white flowers, careful not to uh, reflect light on the background. So I've created this contrast and you'll notice all of a sudden that the, the background is quite a bit darker. So we've eliminated some of that clutter, but the foreground or the flowers are quite a bit brighter. So they really stand out from the background. And this is a really effective way of using reflective light. And lastly, here is a, another familiar image that uh, I took uh, a couple of years ago in uh, Yoho National Park at Lake Ohara. Now this is Seven Vales Waterfall. It's at the back of the lake there. And what was really unique about this situation was this was a cloudless, sunny day, so not terribly exciting for photography. But what I did is I walked around the back of the lake so that it was in the shade and this waterfall was in the shade, but it was actually catching reflected light from the opposite side of the valley. So you can see that in the rocks here, uh, there's quite a bit of reflected light and that really adds a little bit of interest and contrast to the whole image. Now there is a slight blue cast to the image which could easily be warmed up in, uh, in Photoshop or with a warming filter, but I decided to keep it quite cool. Now with that reflected light, it really does add interest to the image. Now I, if I put a polarizer on, it probably would have eliminated uh, that, um, that sheen off the rocks there and wouldn't have been quite as interesting or dynamic. So again, keep it in mind when you're using polarizers uh, not to overdo it with them. Right, that's it for this week's video on light. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to uh, uh, give you an answer. Uh, and as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content. All right, everybody, until next time, uh, keep on shooting. All right, cheers. <laughs>